Hey everybody, this is Mike from the One Stop Co-op Shop, and today I'm looking at Exodus, Rise of the Corruption, a roguelike space adventure game that I'm really excited about. The basic theme of this game is that this evil corruptive force is trying to take over the galaxy as you know it, and they have these vicious all-powerful avatar ships that are helping them. So the only hope left is to find these precursor keys that were used to seal the corruption before. You gotta track down a three or four of them depending on what version of the game you're playing. And if you can get all those keys to the main rift that the corruption is trying to open up to come into the galaxy, then you win the game. Setup begins by putting together your antagonist and your goal. So first you're going to take your precursor signals that are leading you to the keys and you're going to uh, shuffle them up together and randomly draw some. Now you have to decide if you're going to play a three-ship game or a four-ship game, which changes a few things in setup. Uh, for solo, I'm going to play with three ships, but uh, with two players, you would each play two ships. Three players, one each, and four players, one each, of course. I'm playing on the sort of medium difficulty, so I'm going to take two of the easier precursor signals, two of the medium-level perilous precursor signals, and two of the most difficult lethal signals, and I'm going to shuffle all six of those cards together and draw three at random because in a three ship game I need to find three keys. I'm going to put away the rest of the cards without looking at them and these three are going to be slotted in their spots unseen until I actually encounter those uh, spaces. I'm going to start the corruption marker at the very bottom space here and it's going to progress up. It's going to spawn these really dangerous avatars at these two red spaces and if it gets all the way to the top that's one of the game loss conditions. Now, speaking of the avatars, there's four of them identified by a number on their bottom. So I'm going to randomly draw two of these, and I'm going to put them both on their indicated spot, which will show when they spawn. To finish setting up the opposition, I'm going to shuffle the enemy cards, which are divided by level. You have levels uh, one through four, getting progressively tougher. I'm going to have all the twos on top, the threes in the middle, the fours on the bottom. But the level one enemies I'm going to separate out because they're going to be the initial enemy deck. I'll only draw from here until uh, avatars spawn and add more of the tougher enemies in. Next, I'm going to set up my ships. Uh, there are six to choose from in the base game. And I've got uh, my first one is the drone specialist, a repair expert. I've got a little player token to show when he's activated. A marker to show his position on the base, which matches the color of his experience tracker cube. I start the experience tracker cube on the leftmost space, which means he's got his first mod, in this case a repair drone that helps him repair more quickly. I have the rest of his precursor mods over here as he uh, gets more experience from, as it says here, repairing other ships. He's going to uh, unlock these. I've got his dice. As shown here, he has two yellow dice, which are more likely to have the lightning bolt special symbols, but less likely to have damage and hits, which are used mostly in combat, so he's not really good at fighting. I've got three cubes to mark how many actions he has, plus a red cube to show that he's going to strain himself for an extra action. And finally, he starts with one energy, which is the same for all trips, and he starts with his health value full, which is uh, seven tokens. And to quickly meet our other ships, we've also got a pirate ship with four actions, seven health also, one energy. He gains experience whenever he gets scraps, which are basically the currency in the game. He has a blue, the medium attacking die, and a red, the best fighting die, so pretty good at combat. And his starting ability is a pirate's toolkit. After any roll, he can basically spend a scrap to ignore one of the negative miss results. Though that ability does come at the cost of one energy, which he only has one of to start. The final ship in our motley band is the powerful warship, also three actions, but nine health, and two red dice, the most powerful in the game. And his starter precursor mod is the Berserker Cannon, which is a risk-reward kind of thing. He can reroll one of his dice in combat and double either the miss, which is bad, or the hit, which is good. But we'll see how that works when we get to combat. Each of them starts with a single scrap, the currency in the game. And finally, we set up the system stack of explorable systems. We shuffle all of the allied blue systems and the yellow enemy systems together, although I've taken out four tiles because I'm playing with uh, three ships instead of four. We create five equal stacks of four tiles each. In a four ship game, there would be six stacks. We take the main rift, our goal in the end, and four smaller rift tiles, and we add one to each pile, noting where the main rift is. We shuffle each pile with the main rift pile on the bottom and the rest going on top. So the main rift will be one of the final five tiles we explore. And the final rift tile we're left with is the starting tile. And note that there are borders that can't be passed on each tile, but uh, also some open borders so we can move through either of those spaces. 
All three of the ships are placed on that starting tile and you're ready to begin the game. The game begins with an action phase where each of these ships uh, individually takes up to their number of actions, which again is three for most of them, plus an extra strain action if you want to risk taking some damage. Ships can additionally form fleets where they fight and explore together, but they uh, share all their actions and have to spend actions together and also go down to the lower person's number of actions. So if the pirate ship with four actions formed a fleet with the war ship, they'd both go down to three actions overall. Now the pirate ship and the warship are both great at fighting, and the pirate ship levels up by gaining scrap, which one way to get scrap is by fighting, and the warship levels up by defeating enemies. That's how they gain their experience and get their new mods. So it kind of makes sense for both of these uh, strong ships to gang up and form a fleet to go attack some enemies. But the pirate ship does have four actions, so he can use one before he does that. So he's going to go ahead and activate first. And the first action he'll take is one of the most basic, which is sending a probe. He picks one open uh, hex side on the tile he currently occupies. He draws the top tile of the stack, and he has to place it such that the entrances line up, although he can rotate however he likes. Now, drawn tiles have some icons. Uh, we have some more common ones here. So this is an enemy tile, remember the yellow ones are always uh, against us. The white icon is an exploration marker, we put that here and that means we can explore there and have an encounter which is usually positive. Most enemy spaces will give you a chance to avoid detection and move through safely, but in this case this one will automatically detect us, that's what this little radar symbol means, and we'll have to fight one enemy, some places actually have two enemies instead. But that's not a bad result since we wanted to fight anyway. So before the pirate takes his second action, he is going to form a fleet with the warship. The warship only has three actions, so neither of them loses anything. And they'll spend their next action on another basic one, which is a jump, which moves them one space to an already explored uh, tile. So because there's no detection roll needed, we automatically face one enemy. And combat takes no action, so we resolve it right away. So we're facing a damaged bomber with an unstable loadout. He has four life and zero shields. Now, life you have to destroy to blow them up. Shields are subtracted from every attack you make each turn, so here it's nice he doesn't have any. And all enemies have a special power. In this case, when you defeat this guy, you have to perform a damage roll, so your ship might get damaged from him, his explosion. But know that it does not apply during the first attack, so if we can just blast him out of the sky, we won't get hurt at all. Now, pretty much all actions in the game are resolved using your player dice. And again, each ship has their own pair of dice with different color combinations. You don't want to see the misses, which in combat will cause you to take damage. And if you get two misses on the same combat roll, you take a bunch more damage. So in combat, each of the ships individually decides whether they're going to be defensive and only roll one of their dice, or offensive and roll both of their dice. With offense, you can of course do more damage, but with defense, you have no chance of getting the double miss that will damage your ship heavily. In this case, though, we really want to kill this bomber straight out, so we're both going to go offensive. So we roll our dice together, the warship, oh man, gets five hits all by himself, and the pirate ship, oh wow, gets four hits as well. So neither of them rolled a miss, if they had, they would have taken one damage. If they rolled a double miss, they would have taken two damage, and also drawn a damage card, which might stick with them for quite a while. So here the enemy is defeated on the first turn, ignoring his ability, which is great. Both ships get scrap equal to the level of the enemy they destroyed, in this case one scrap each for a level 1 enemy. They also additionally each gain one experience, the pirate ship because he gained the number of scrap, and the warship because he defeated an enemy. When either of them gains one more experience, they're going to get their next level of precursor mod card. Now additionally because they won the combat, they also temporarily pacify this system so that they can move through freely without getting attacked. At the end of this turn, this token is going to turn to its red side. At the end of the next turn, it'll go away. So a system only stays pacified for two turns, basically. Now, they could spend an action to explore this token, which would make them draw an exploration card. But maybe the drone specialist can do that. I think they're going to keep on moving and trying to attack more. They've got two actions left. And another action you can take is called a blind jump. You reveal an adjacent system, just like probing, but you immediately move into it, even if you don't want to go there. But since we're trying to get into a fight, nothing could be too bad with that. Oh man, and we do indeed get a, uh, another enemy system, but this time with two enemies, although no automatic detection, and an exploration token. 
So we could do a detection roll. In this case, both ships would roll both their dice. And if either of them got even a single miss, they would be detected and have to fight. But here we kind of want to fight. So we're going to have a double combat right away and draw two enemies. We've got both a scout with a reinforcement signal. Uh, he's got six life. He has one shield. So that'll be subtracted from the total of our attack each turn. And he has an ability, if we disengage, basically run away from combat, he adds two harder enemies to the deck. So we get some level twos in there. And the chaser has a weapons barrage. Whenever we roll at least one miss, we have to use defense during the next attack. So we have to roll one die next time we attack, which makes it harder to get by the shield. Now, when you have multiple enemies, you get to choose what order you fight them in. So we're going to fight the scout first so that if things go badly and we do have to disengage, we're disengaging from the chaser instead of him. Both ships are going to go offense again, even more important with the shield. So the pirate ship uh, gets a miss and a single hit. Now he could use his pirate's toolkit ability to ignore that miss by uh, using his one power and one scrap, but he'd rather save that for a turn where he rolled only misses, so he's not going to do that yet. Meanwhile, the warship... Ah, oh, gosh, terrible roll. Now again, the warship could use his power. After an attack roll, he could spend a power to re-roll a die and double either the hits rolled or the misses rolled. But that's again better if I roll uh, double misses, so we're not going to use it yet. We have two hits total, minus one for the shields. So we only do one damage out of six to the scout. And then because we each rolled a single miss, we each take one damage ourselves. And to show damage taken, you can just flip your little uh, tokens over to their red side. Our right, combat keeps on going until you disengage or destroy the enemy or are destroyed yourself. So pirates, there we go, much better, three hits. And our warship, oh my gosh, five hits. So that's eight Way more than enough to blow this guy up, even with his shield. We again gain one scrap each from a level one enemy, and we each get one experience, which does unlock our level two mod immediately before we even finish the battle against the other enemy. Mods always have two sides. You get to pick which one you want to activate. And the even numbered mods are always, always on abilities as opposed to the odd numbered mods, which need to use your power. So we've got either scavenger's toolkit, when you defeat an enemy, gain an additional two scrap. Or Smuggler's Toolkit, when you gain scrap from anything, gain one more. It seems like we're going to be fighting a lot in the game with the uh, Warship combo, so I think I'm going to go for the Scavenger's Toolkit for more scrap from fighting. Note that gain mods don't apply to the action you're just completing, so I don't get two extra scrap for the enemy I just defeated. The Warship can choose either to recover all his power whenever he kills an enemy with Absorbing Alloys, or Reaver Alloys to recover two health whenever he defeats an enemy. We already have a Repair Ship who's specifically here to uh, repair us, so I think I'm going to go with the Absorbing Alloys to recover more power. Now back to the fight, we've still got the Chaser to deal with, and don't forget, if we roll a miss, we have to defend the next round. The Pirate Ship gets four hits, nice roll there. And the Warship... Gets one and a miss. Now I'd like to finish this quickly and with my new uh, mod, I'll get my energy back after I use it anyway. So I'm gonna use the warship's only current power to re-roll a die after an attack roll and hopefully I'll get a hit instead of a miss. Oh, and I did, so that'll be six attack, which clearly I don't need, but I'm gonna blast that guy up. I will uh, use up my power, but don't forget with my new absorbing alloys, I'm getting it right back. So the warship just berserker cannoned that guy out of existence and sucked up his metal. Nice job. Now we again pacify the system for two turns. They both gain one scrap, but don't forget the scavenger's toolkit lets him get three scrap instead. So he's actually going to end up with six scrap overall and the warship has four. And they both gain another experience, only one away from their third mod. So a great first turn, really powering up to fight some tougher enemies later. The fleet has one regular action left, and they could strain to get a second action, which would mean they would make a damage roll at the end of the turn and possibly take some damage. And I think they are going to strain, so first they're going to use their final regular action to explore and show you an exploration card. We remove the token from the system, since each one can only be explored once, and we flip a random exploration card. The artifact is reacting to your ship's presence and sending waves of energy your way. You might adjust the reaction to absorb it and recover all your actions. Oh my gosh! So this is a warning card, and there are three types of the exploration cards. Analysis cards have a bunch of options, and you can do as many as you want, although each costs one action. Warning the fleet has to do just a single choice out of the actions available. And danger is all bad. You have to basically roll or suffer a negative consequence. So first of all, you'll always have an option that is only available to certain classes. Uh, my drone ship is a scholar, but the other guys are rogues and warriors, so they can't choose this. 
but this would let them explore a system anywhere. So just place a new tile down and also gain a ship module, one of these extra cards that gives them special powers or a once per game abilities. But they too have two options available to them. They can blast the cube to pieces, gaining three scrap, or they can adjust the reaction and absorb the energy. So they roll all their dice, and if either of them get at least one of these special symbols, they get all their actions back, so we'll have an entire new set of three actions. But if not, we'll each take a damage card, which is pretty devastating. Now while the drone ship's yellow dice have ton of special symbols, the pirate and warship's blue and red dice don't have very many at all. The red dice only have a single side with a special symbol, and the blue die only has two sides. So as much as I would love to roll these and get a whole new set of actions, I think I'm going to take the safe bet and just blast the cube and get the scrap. Now since they're in a fleet, they get to decide how to divide up the three scrap among themselves. I think we're going to give two to the warship since the pirate ship gets it more easily. But we'll definitely give one to the pirate ship because that's going to level him up again. Remember, it's anytime he gains scrap and he's already getting his third mod. So we've got either a decoy signal or a decoy probe. The signal says when you draw an enemy, spend X energy, draw X additional cards, keep one and shuffle the rest. It gives you a better chance of drawing the enemy you want. And decoy probe says pacify system located X tiles away. Hmm. I think I like that one better because that's going to have more utility for like the drone ship as well. It could make a system safe for him to pass through without him uh, needing to worry about getting attacked. So we go ahead and slot that in. Again, the top all requires energy and the bottom does not. Now I'll show you how you get more energy soon, but right now we each only have one. And actually I think that's a perfect use of their strain actions. They are both going to strain to get one more action. And they're gonna do another one of the basic actions of the game called ship maintenance. With ship maintenance, they get to each pick one option. They can pay one scrap to repair one damage on their ship. They can pay three scrap to get rid of one of these nasty damage cards, which luckily they haven't gotten yet. They can pay the indicated cost of the leftmost uncovered energy token to gain another energy. So here it costs two scrap for each of them. Or they could sell an extra mod they've gained previously, but we don't have any of those. In this case, we can't use our awesome powers without having some energy, so they're both going to spend two of their scrap to upgrade their energy capacity. Now that's the end of their turn, but because they strained, they each have to make a damage roll, just rolling their two dice and seeing if they get any misses. So the pirate ship... Ah, uh, does get one miss. But you know what, he's got energy left and it comes back at the beginning of next turn, so he's gonna spend one of his energy to ignore the miss at the cost of one of his scrap. So we flip the energy over to its use side and put his five scrap down to four. As for the warship, ah, beautiful, no damage at all. So a big turn for our fleet, but we still got our drone specialist with three actions. He wants to repair to level up, so he might want to come over to these guys and help heal their damage to boost himself. But he could also explore this way and expand out the map, because remember we have to dig through the tiles to find the precursor keys and also eventually the main rift to win the game. He could even go to this uh, remaining exploration token, because the system is safe right now, and uh, maybe get some bonuses from that. So I think he's going to do a few of those. First, he's going to probe over here and see what the next system is. Oh my gosh, that worked out so perfect. <laughs> So remember, he probed, he didn't do a blind jump, so we just have to go over here, and this is just a dead end. And these rifts are used by the avatars, the really nasty kind of mini-bosses, to jump around quickly, and they also spawn here. So having them together in, like, one side of the map is amazing. I love that that's a dead end over there. For his second action, he'll jump over here, and his third action, he'll explore. And he draws another warning card, a collapsing star relay. The precursor has built a Dyson sphere around a tear in space created by a black hole. You might reactivate the Dormant Relay and travel anywhere on the board. Now the travel anywhere on the board isn't really worth the chance of uh, this is creating a new rift for the bad guys to use, because I'm only one space away from the furthest space anyway. He's also not a rogue, so he can't explore two systems by sending a probe through the space tear. So I think he's just going to get some materials from the Dyson Sphere because repairing costs money and he needs to repair to level up. And that brings him to five scrap with no actions except his strain action left. Now he is going to strain to move with his friends because he kind of wants to get damage since he can repair himself to level up as well. So he moves here and then rolls for strain damage. Now he's got yellow dice, not blue or red, but they all have one third of their sides misses, so the chance of getting damaged are always the same. And here he did get one damage, but not two, which is fine because he kind of wants to repair damage. So all of our ships have activated, so we now go into the corruption phase and we move this marker just one space forward when it gets to this fourth space, we're going to spawn our first avatar. And if, again, if we get to the end there, we lose the game. 
We finish with the end phase. All our pacified markers flip over, so these systems are only safe for one more turn. The fleets break up, although we can reform them next turn. And our ships get all their actions back. They flip their tokens back over. And they recover all of their spent energy. Now, I like how last turn worked out, so I think I'm going to start with the pirate ship again and spend his fourth action, or sorry, his first action probing and then form a fleet with the warship and go hunting for some enemies again. So in this case, his probe reveals our first allied system. This one does not require a roll to see if you encounter any enemies and you can't get into combat here unless you're fighting an avatar. It does have an expiration token and it also has a wormhole, which if I get other ones on the board will let me move between them freely, whereas our enemies have a much harder time moving through them. All right, now we'll form the fleet for free and we still got three actions left, but <laughs> we don't want to be here. The, we want to get into some fighting, right? So let's go this way instead. And oh, we didn't get combat, but we did get our first precursor key. So we'll put that just like that to keep everything all connected to each other. So we still have to explore here to find out what the key requires, but instead of putting an exploration token, we put one of the three keys we need to win the game. And these are often tough and need cooperation, so let's go ahead and look at what it is. So it'll take an action from the fleet, so that leaves them with only one regular action left. And because it says number two, we look at the card that was randomly placed in number two. And here, luckily, it is one of the easier ones, not the yellow or red ones. And here it says Quantum Box. The signal leads you to a long-distance probe lost in space. Inside you find a quantum box, transporting what can only be a key. You see no way to force the box open or even to hack into it. Luckily, it reacts to your ship's technology and might open when all the captains gather here. Huh, when all surviving players are in the system, we get it for free. Now this is pretty lucky because we got it when we're all next to each other instead of when we were kind of cast to the winds. These guys only have one regular action left, so I guess instead of uh, moving around and fighting people, they'll just do another probe, let's say over to here this time. I know we get another allied system. This one has an expiration token and also has an ally. So if we go there and spend an action, we can draw one of these random ally cards. They'll sell us modules, often give us like other bonuses once per game, so a really good place to go to if we can get there. Now our fleet could stop there, but I think they're going to strain to upgrade their power again. This time it's going to cost them each three scrap, leaving them with one left each only. But it does give them three energy overall, which will give them a lot of uses of their powers. And don't forget, defeating a single enemy for the warship gets him all of his energy back, so really great there. But they do have to roll for possible damage, and the pirate ship takes one hit. And I think he's not going to spend his last scrap to re-roll that. He'd rather save that for a more desperate situation like a fight. And the warship... Ah, oh, takes no hits. Man, this guy's lucky. So that puts the pirate ship at two damage out of seven. All right, time for the drone specialist to come over and help out. So, coming here, we immediately get this precursor key. We have to put it on one of our ships, and I think I'll put it on... So just to kind of tell you, at the end, we're going to have to put all the keys on the main rift and then defend them from any avatars nearby, and the warship is great at stopping those guys. So I think we'll put it on the pirate ship, since he moves the fastest with four actions instead of three. Now before the drone specialist does anything else, let's uh, use his powers and level up a bit. So for his second action, he's going to repair the pirate ship. It costs him one scrap, just like the other guy, so he's down to four. But note his repair drone power, when he does a repair, he can spend extra energy to heal extra damage. So here he's going to flip the pirate ship back to full health. That gets him one experience, but he still needs one more. So I think he'll go ahead and repair the warship single damage as well. And that gets him a new mod. In this case, he can either get a monitoring drone, only use one die when doing a strain damage roll. So man, he'll like always be able to get four actions every turn. Or automated drone, your first repair costs no action, even when in a fleet. Oh, that seems ridiculous, because he can level up so quickly. I really want to get this one, because he's about to probably strain himself, but... Oh, this is so good. Yeah, I think I have to get the automated drone to repair more easily. So with the idea in mind that he can repair pretty easily, I think he's going to strain himself to go to one of those exploration tokens. Mm -hmm. Between the allied one... Yeah, I think he wants to go to the ally, because the fleet's probably going to go the other way. And he still has to roll for damage. Oh, crud! <laughs> so now I'm really sad it didn't take the other card. Uh, so he has to flip over two damage for rolling two misses. But more devastating, he gets a random damage card. Damage repair arm. You can't repair! <laughs> God. This was the worst uh, possible draw we could have had. 
So it'll cost him three scrap to fix that, which he does have. But man, that is a that is not a pretty draw right there. So it's the end of the round, and we're only one away from our first avatar showing up. You'll see how scary they are in a second. We got our second precursor key. We need number one and number three now to be ready to win the game. Our ships get their energy back, flip their player tokens back over, and our red pacified systems go away. So these are dangerous places again. Not that we have any reason to go back there unless we want to fight. And finally, the uh, fleet breaks up, but again, can get the gang back together whenever they want. All right, so I like having this wormhole here to come back to later and then explore that way, maybe when this side of the uh, board gets dangerous. So I think we're going to go with these guys first and, uh, and kind of go this way with our exploration. So the pirate ship will use his uh, first action before joining the fleet to probe over here. And oh man, another place with an expiration and a wormhole. So not too big of a jump to go from there to there, but I guess it would save us an action at least. Okay, now they'll form the fleet and spend uh, their first action out of three to go there. And their second one, well, let's see, do we want to explore first? Yeah, let's explore, see if we can get some scrap maybe. And ah, this time we do get a danger, which has no positive benefit. Okay, Dormant Swarm. We do a skill roll, and between the two of us, we have to get two hits. That should be pretty easy. Glad we found it instead of the repair ship. As you approach the surface, a planet-sized swarm of corrupt nanomachines left over from the devastation awakens and tries to grab you. You have to escape. So if we don't get two hits between the two of us, we'll each uh, take two damage and have to draw a damage card as well. So hopefully this will be easy. Okay, <laughs> thank you for that one die, because otherwise we were getting pretty hurt. Now note that in a skill test, we don't take damage from misses. They just don't give us the uh, things we need to pass the test. All right, we've got uh, one action left and a strain action. So let's go over here into the unknown and maybe get into a fight. And no, it's just another rift, which does put them uh, near us now. And know, man, this is extra bad because an avatar is going to spawn on the rift closest to us, which before would have been all the way over there, but now they're going to be right on top of us. Although at least it's the... Uh, the combat guys, they have a chance against them. Well, might as well keep exploring. Let's go over here with a strain action. And okay, another allied system. We're getting a lot of those with an exploration token. Yeah, this avatar is not going to be very nice to us in a moment. We'll see how that all works. But let's check in with our sad repair ship. So first he's going to do the exploration token, and then probably the ally too, because both of them might have a chance to heal him without him needing to uh, spend all his actions doing it. First for the exploration. Okay, good. Uh, well, a ghost ship, but at least it's not another danger. So this is our first analysis card, which means we automatically get one option for the action we spend to explore, but we can additionally spend additional actions for uh, other options. And here, this guy is a scholar, so he could get a free component, and he can also get four scrap. In the middle of a recent battlefield, you pick up a faint signal coming from a derelict command ship. You might be able to recover some useful equipment and data from it. So I think we'll get the four scrap, but additionally, I think we're going to get the free component. In this case, it's an emergency decoy. Not a very good one. It's only worth a two. After detection roll, we can discard this to ignore all of our misses. So I guess it's nice if he goes into a dangerous system, he can ignore any combat he might get into. So he's got one action left and then a strain action. I think he's going to talk to the ally because, again, they might be able to help him. I mean, he's got uh, seven scrap to spend on things. So here the ally is a cartographer. We have a once per game ability we're going to get to do for free, which is reveal three systems anywhere on the board. Additionally, he has three regular ship modules and one precursor module for sale. So let's see, we've got emergency batteries can get us three energy, but you have to discard it. Scavenger drone gives us an extra scrap whenever we get some. It only costs two. I mean, that seems amazing. Basic repair drone when we repair. Oh, so it's literally just my power. So kind of useless to me. And finally, an avatar virus. Disable the shields and abilities of an avatar for one turn. That is pretty good, but for five, I don't know. I think I'm just going to buy the scavenger drone for now, leaving me with five scrap. Now, this ally will stay on this space with the rest of his goods for the rest of the game. So if we ever go there, we can buy more stuff from him. Although none of this is too uh, compelling, I think. Okay, well, I might regret this, but I am going to use my strain action to spend three scrap to get rid of my no repair card. And then now I can repair, so I'm going to do my first repair of the turn, which is free. It doesn't cost any action. I'm going to use my one energy. So I'm going to spend one scrap, but heal myself two damage. That does count as a repair, so I'm one away from my next mod. But I got to roll for damage. Let's hope for some better luck. Ah, beautiful. Nothing. 
But what's not beautiful, and man, are you going to see why, is our first avatar coming into play. So we flip him and see which one it is. Number two, let's go look at the damage. So he comes out in the rift closest to uh, enemy ships. So unfortunately, that means right next to us. And he's going to have to move this turn. And there's only one side of the six-sided die that has no movement. So he's almost certainly going to get these guys and attack them. The avatars are number uh, match. So we got number two. This is Ravage with a Corrupt EMP. He has 25 health. Yes, you're there, right? 25. Four shields. He subtracts that from every time you attack him. And if in your attack you roll at least one miss, then you permanently discard a module after the retaliation. So, yeah, he's not too much fun. And we get to see if he uh, catches us. I'm not too optimistic here. So he gets to move two spaces, and this means that this turn he could use wormholes. He has a couple results that show that. But here he's just going to come right to us. And we don't have combat on his turn. We still have to always do combat on our own turn. But he does force us both to roll a damage roll immediately. So the pirate ship. <sighs> Good. Nothing. And our friendly warship. Oh, gosh. And unfortunately, I can only use his reroll power during an attack roll. So he's going to take two damage and get a damage card. Terrible. So he was undamaged, but now he's down to seven life. And his damage card is Shattered Weapon. Use one less die during attack rolls. Ah, oh, man, that's terrible for, for this guy who's my strongest attacker. All right, man, we went from a pretty good place to feeling really bad. Uh, these guys are going to have to run away from the Avatar right away. But unfortunately, whenever you disengage from an Avatar, you get shots. You have to roll a damage roll. But additionally, you advance Corruption one space. So it's going to take away an entire turn of the game for us. So I think I'm going to activate the drone specialist first this turn and try to scout out an escape route for these guys. Now he's got this card to ignore detection, so he doesn't really mind if he uh, goes into an enemy space by accident. So he'll blind jump over to here. And oh man. I mean this is good in that it's another one of our precursor uh, artifacts, but it's bad in that uh, we're going to have to fight for it potentially. Right, I want to keep it connected, so I'm going to set the tile like that so they can get to it too. And yeah, he kind of has to, so he's going to spend his second action to explore that. And, oh man, it's a lethal one. Avatar Trap. Okay, place a rift in this system. When an avatar enters this system, discard the rift. Oh, and we get it when there's no rift in the system? You follow the signal to a space station orbiting an inactive rift. You tap into the station's network and learn that it was once used as an avatar trap. But as you approach, the station activates and the rift reopens. The only way to get the key powering it is to use the trap the way it was intended. So we add a permanent extra rift here. So if we can get the avatar to come over here, he'll close the rift and we can get the precursor key to get closer to winning the game. <sighs> so let's see, I'm thinking... If he stays here and waits for the Avatar to come to him, the other guys can escape, and then hopefully, since he won't be too damaged, he can escape too. I guess it's my best bet. So he's got one regular action and one strain action left. For his regular action, he'll go ahead and probe right here. Okay, I'm glad he probed. That's an enemy space. And there's an expiration token there. And then for his strain action, he'll uh, probe the other way as well. Okay, and another enemy space. I knew they were out there somewhere. But interestingly, this one has a wormhole, so it could connect ooh, all the way over there. That would be pretty far away from the Avatar. So that's a great way for him to escape uh, after the Avatar comes on him. Now for his final uh, free action, he'll use his power to repair for free and take away his last damage. That's his last uh, scrap, though. But that does push him to his third mod. And he's got either, when you repair, ooh, target additional ship so you can repair more than one ship. Or FTL drone, target a ship further away. I think we're going to try to stay close to each other, so let's go ahead and get the replicating drone. Now, sadly, he has no scrap left to actually repair with. And he might get damaged by straining. No, come on! Oh, man, this is terrible. Right before the avatar is about to attack him. And his damage card is... Leaking reactor. You can't avoid detection. Oh, that means oh, he can't even use his emergency decoy because his reactor is leaking and they'll find him anyway. No! All right, let's get to our friends. Uh, they are going to form a fleet right away. That means the pirate ship only have three actions this turn. And they're going to disengage. They have to each take a damage roll. Pirate ship takes one damage. Warship takes none. Beautiful. 
Now they have to immediately do a blind jump, a regular jump, or what's called a hyperspace jump. We haven't shown this yet, but you move uh, three spaces in a row and you ignore the first two spaces. So you don't like have to roll for detection by enemies and such. I think in this case, we'll go one, two, and then through the wormhole, three. Get really far away from that guy. Like, hopefully he won't be able to use wormholes. That did cost two of their actions though, so they only have one regular action and one strain action left. Oh, and by the way, something I forgot to do when the avatar came out, uh, I take the next four enemies, the level twos, and I shuffle them with whatever remains in the level one deck. So here it's only one enemy. So almost assuredly, if I fight, I'm gonna fight a stronger level two. Right, so we gotta keep exploring and find that main rift. So I think they're gonna blind jump over to here, although they could explore and see if they get anything useful. But now we ain't got time for that. Ooh, another rift. And don't forget, uh, the avatars can just teleport from rift to rift, just like we use wormholes. So we're certainly going to end up on that fun space. Let's uh, go one more blind jump with a strain. Oh, gosh, an enemy space with two enemies, and they're both going to be level twos. Oh, my lord. So the chances are low, but we are going to try to avoid detection, because I don't know if I want to fight all those guys. So we can't have any misses. The warship. I didn't get any misses. Okay, so he doesn't get detected. The pirates, come on, you're sneaky, guys. Oh, awesome, so nobody detected us. Beautiful. Now, sadly, though, we'll have to roll for detection again at the beginning of our turn, so pretty good chance they'll be fighting, but at least they're not fighting immediately. Now, don't forget corruption advance one when we disengage from the avatar. Now it advances one more, so three more turns until another avatar comes out. And speaking of the avatar, I don't really want him to move onto my space, but I kind of need him to. And, oh, man, he almost got the blank, but yeah, so he can move two spaces through wormholes, and he's going to the closest guy, so uh, these guys over here, you just can't barely see them, would be one, two, three spaces away. This guy's only one, so he's definitely going here. Now, it does mean the drone specialist has to immediately roll for damage. No! Come on, stop getting these doubles! Right, his chances of making this out alive are not looking too great. Here's another damage card. Damage probe launcher. You can't send probes. I can deal with that. He can just blind jump and take his chances with his leaking reactor. But on the positive note, he does get a precursor key, our second one. So you're allowed to count the uh, stack, and let's see, we've got 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we have to get through at least 6 more tiles before the main rift will even appear, and don't forget we still have to find the uh, last precursor key. And there are also 4 of these basic rifts, not counting the starting one, before we get to the main rift, so we know there's only one more uh, basic rift that's going to come out. All right, so I don't love their chances, but let's start with our fighters over here. They'll go into a fleet and uh, roll their detection to see if they get attacked. And the pirate ship. Does not get detected. Warship. That does get detected. Well, you know, decoy system. Pacify system located X tiles away. I assume X can't be zero, so I can't do it on a space I'm already on. And yeah, I guess if they blind jump, so I wouldn't be able to see it anyway, but uh, good to know for using later. All right, for now though, we are attacking two enemies, but if we can defeat them both, we'll pacify the system and make it easier for the uh, drone ship to get through. And uh, no luck, we got two level twos, so no easier level ones for us to fight. Okay, we have a defender with solid alloys, 12 life, two shields. If you roll a miss, you ignore a hit on your other die. An advanced scout, mobilization signal, 11 two shields. If you disengage, discard two random lowest level enemy cards from the deck. I guess we gotta fight these guys, but darn it, my warship still only has one die. You can't do offensive attack, which will make it really tough to get through those shields. But hey, we gotta do what we gotta do, right? So let's go into combat with this guy. And oh, great roll. We got four hits, beautiful. And the warship will add his single red die. And yeah, he'll use his uh, Berserker Cannon to re-roll that and double the new result. Okay, so one becomes two. So that's four plus two, that's six. Minus the two shields, they get four damage through. Hey, that's a great start. Let's go again, see if we can keep hope alive. Okay, great. The, uh, the pirate ship is still holding its own. Three damage. Come on, warship. Oh man, and three more, six. That means uh, minus the shields, that's four more damage. He's down to three life. Come on, guys, you're doing awesome. Okay, once more with feeling, pirate ship. No! Okay, um, hmm. All right, so we can use his pirate's toolkit to ignore one miss, but he does use up his last scrap. So even though he has a lot more energy, he won't be able to do anything with it. So he's just gonna take one damage, but not get a damage card. Don't know if the warship can do much by himself. Hopefully he won't get hurt. 
Ah, come on. Well, let's do Berserker Cannon. Reroll that and try to get some big doubler. Come on. Two times two is four. That means two gets past the shield. Yes, he's only got one life left. All right, final round, hopefully. Come on, pirate ship. Yes, three. That's already enough. So just warship, just don't get hurt. Beautiful. Bam, got that guy. So the warship gets two scrap for the level two enemy. Pirate ship gets four with its power, big money, and that means it's going to be able to use its pirate's toolkit again with its two energy, which is great. He's almost to his fourth mod, and oh, the warship gets his third mod for defeating another enemy. He can either get, after an attack roll, ignore a miss, not bad, or scattered beam, after an attack roll, spend an energy to make your miss also count as two hits. I can already re-roll a miss. I think I'd rather have this one for when I get a single miss to do a bunch of damage as well. Oh, and that's right. He defeated an enemy, so he gets all his energy back. Beautiful. He's ready for another fight to go. And speaking of another fight, we got the Defender. Also has two shields. Has 12 life, one more than our last guy. And if we roll a miss, we get minus one hit on the other die. That won't affect the warship much. Speaking of the pirate ship, here we go. Okay, two hits. Hey, better than a miss. Come on, warship. Okay, well, I mean, I'll take it. It's just one damage, but we didn't get hurt. All right, here's his Pirate's Toolkit and one scrap and one power to ignore one and still take one damage, but he's got one power left. Okay, Warship, not sure you can do much this turn, <laughs> except get hurt. Well, let's go ahead and use his Berserker Cannon and re-roll that. Nice. So that's a uh, four with the doubling, so he does get two through the shield. So our enemy's down to nine life. All right, come on, Pirate Ship, do better than last time. Ah, so that's only one, because remember, if he rolls a miss, then that goes down by one. Although, if he ignores that, it becomes two. We'll see what the warship rolls. All right, so the warship's going to certainly re-roll his. Come on, doubler on doubler. Oh my gosh! So that's six. Okay, so yeah, we're definitely going to use the power to ignore that. So we have no energy left for the pirate ship, but that doesn't exist. So we've got two plus six is eight. Minus two is six damage. This guy's down to three life. Loving it. Okay, come on. One good round. One good round. Come on, pirate ship. Three. I'll take it. I'll take it. Warship, you got a power left if you need it. And you kind of do. So I could re-roll, but let's play the safe bet. I'll let him take the damage. And I'll use his last energy to make the miss count as two hits as well. And note the defender only says the other die loses a hit, but this is all the same die. So that's two, four, five, minus two. We just defeat him. So that's four more scrap for the pirate ship. Two more scrap for the warship. The warship gets all of his energy back. He's one away from mod four, and the pirate ship goes to his fourth mod, which is either drive field extender, perform a different action than the fleet if you end up in the same system. Ah, oh, but this is way better. Use any remaining actions by yourself after the fleet has played. So here we go. He can do an extra action at the end of the turn instead of at the beginning before the fleet forms. Definitely going to take that one. So man, that was intense, but we have pacified this system, prepared the way for our friend when he hopefully survives running away from the Avatar. And they haven't actually used any actions yet, so let's do some blind jumping, just explore as quickly as we can. So first action, friendly system with an exploration token. Nice, but we don't have time for that. Second action down here. Ah, there we go. Our final precursor key. So third action, let's see what this thing is. Okay, perilous, so it's not too hard. Shielded outpost. You follow the signal to a barren moon orbiting a giant gas planet. In one of the craters, you discover an outpost with its shield still up, preventing anyone or anything from entering. To access the key powering it, you'll have to take out the shield with brute force. So place 10 on this card as shields. A skill roll, looking for damage, that's good. Remove one damage per shield. When we get rid of all the shield, we get the key. Nice and easy, I like it. Now, it's worth noting that when it has uh, the action in brackets like this, it costs one action, and discovering the precursor signal does not count as doing that action. So we have to do extra actions to actually do this. So I think they'll both do a strain action to attack it. And it's good to note that it is not an attack. It's a skill test, so that means that the warship does still get both of his reds. Come on, give me lots of hits. Okay, that's, that's six. That's great. That's already uh, half of it, or more than half of it in one go. Okay, now with his new ability, the pirate ship is going to do his fourth action to also attack it. Come on, get four. Oh my gosh! Wow, in one turn we got it. Amazing! 
All right, definitely going to put this on the pirate ship. He's already got uh, two of them, and the drone ship, if he can escape, has the last one. Man, we still have a lot of tiles to go through and another avatar coming soon. Before that, let's see if our drone can escape. Oh, I forgot this uh, rift is gone. All right, droney, droney, we believe in you. Okay, one hit. I can handle that. He's got two life left. So he's going to spend two of his actions to do a hyperspace jump. Remember, I don't have to uh, worry about detection in spaces over the jump, so I'm going to go through the wormhole. So that's one, and then uh, two, and then three. And yeah, I guess he'll hyperspace jump again. That's the best he can do. So uh, he's going to take two actions, and that does mean that he's straining and might blow himself up to go one, two, three. But hey, even if he does blow himself up, he will leave the key in this space for his friends to pick up. All right, so he's only got two life left. If he rolls two hits, he is gone. Ooh, but he's amazing. No damage at all. Nice job. All right, we made it. Now we've escaped one avatar for the moment, but disengaging moved it one, then it moves one again. So we're about to spawn another avatar next turn. And let's not forget number two, trying to catch up to us. Two movement with no wormholes. So let's see, the shortest path to us is to go back to the rift and then over there. So yeah, he's going to go one, two, and now he can teleport to any rift next turn. Okay, so all this left to do is to find the main rift, but then the avatars will try to reach it and stop us. We gotta like lead them away, but also get our ships in. So let's see. We've gotta explore at least four more of these before the main rift might show up. I think for the first time we're gonna split up and not do the fleet thing because uh, right now it's not about that. It's about just finding that main rift. I think the drone specialist is gonna go first. He's gonna use the trade action for one action. He's going to give his precursor key to the pirate ship. So the pirate ship is now carrying all our hopes and prayers. He's also going to take four of the pirate ship's six scrap. For his second action, he's going to get rid of his uh, not avoiding detection damage card. So he can actually uh, move safely. And then he's going to do a free action to repair with the one remaining scrap. And he's going to use one energy to repair two different ships. And I think he'll repair himself and the pirate ship. He's got two actions left if he strains. So he's just going to blind jump. So we'll go this way first. And oh man, it is an, oh gosh. Oh, it's an enemy uh, station where I'm automatically detected. So my emergency decoy won't help because I'm not doing a detection roll. It just happens automatically. He gets, oh, he actually got the level one ship. Oh, but it's still, when you disengage, lose an action, geez. So yeah, this is pretty terrible. He basically has to fight this guy. Because if he disengages, he's just going to have a level 2 on his space next turn. I don't think he can survive that. Sorry, here we go. 5 life. Uh, he's got yellow, the weakest dice. Come on for some beautiful rolls. That's 2 damage. The guy's got 3 life left. Come on, get out of that tractor beam. Oh my gosh, 2 more damage. The guy's got 1 life left. The drone specialist is a monster. Oh my god. <laughs> Wow, he's rolling better than the combat guys. And so he does get one scrap for a, a free repair next turn. Sorry, I forgot to unpacify this system, but he does pacify this one like a beast. And I forgot his uh, scavenger drone gets him an extra scrap, so even better. And after being emboldened like that, he's not done. He's going to use his uh, strain action to move again. Oh, oh my. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. He's kind of good in a way because <laughs> our new avatar is probably going to pop up here and uh, that'll take him farther away from the rest of these guys. But I think you're going to die, buddy. But, you know, thanks for discovering that place for us. Let's see if he gets damaged first by the strain. And no, he does not. Great. All right, now I'm kind of questioning my split up tactic. Is that really what I want to do? Because, man, if they get attacked, they'll be in a bad way. Yeah, you know what? Actually, they are going to form a fleet again. That's just worked well for the entire game. All right, so blind jump with their first action. Let's go here. Okay, and it is an enemy system. They don't really mind fighting, but they don't really want to waste the time. So let's see if they can get away with sneaking. Yes, they can. All right, second action. We'll blind jump again to here. Oh, man, another enemy. And lots of exploration tokens they're leaving behind, too. Right, let's see if their luck can hold. Ah, warship, and he can't reroll them. The, uh, the pirate could have ignored them. All right, so we're fighting. All right, this has to be a level two because they're all that's left. Huh, level two with a lot less energy. Oh, but when we defeat it, we defor perform a damage roll no matter what this time. I'm still not too concerned about him. Pirate ship, go! 
Nice. Three hits. Warship, go. Oh, two more. Five. So that's already four out of his nine life after getting by his shield. And let's get his life on there just to track. Pirate ship, part two. No. All right, we'll ignore one of those for one power, but uh, leave the other one as it is. And the warship. Okay, one doesn't get past the armor. Pirate ship is down to four health, by the way, if you're keeping track. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, I guess I... Well, that's my last scrap. You know, I'm not going to ignore it. But the warship... Nice! So that's three, five... Ah, leaves him with one life left after getting past his shields. And the pirate ship carrying everything is down to three life. You know, maybe, you know, he's going to be defensive this turn and only roll a red as well, because we only need two damage anyway. Ah, gosh. Okay, but the warship... Are you serious? All right, so the pirate ship will ignore that with his last scrap, because he's about to get a bunch more. Okay, and same thing again. Safe pirate ship. No. Safe warship. God. All right, warship's going to use a power to make that two hits and defeat the guy automatically. I don't want to take any chances. I don't know. I just realized I don't have anything left in case I get a bad damage roll. All right, let's see what happens to the pirate ship. Don't blow up. No! Pirate ship is dead! God. And how about our friendly warship? Okay, he's fine. Man, I wish I could have traded those results. And it is pacified, but man, things are not looking good for our heroes. On a positive note, the warship gets a two scrap. And he does go up to level four. So we can either get heavy ammo, if I roll the lightning bolt, it counts as two hits. Or reaver ammo, if I roll a lightning bolt, it counts as one hit and I get a health back. Definitely want that one. Okay, he's got one action left plus a depleted action. I'm not sure I can afford that. All right, so for the one action, he clearly needs to pick up all the precursor keys to even have a chance of winning. Now here's the thing, if I do the depleted action and search, and I could get the main rift, which is the last rift remaining, um, yes, I'd be in the place I need to be to win, but the avatars could come straight to me and uh, easily stop me from winning the game because I can't fight avatars with just one damaged warship. It's a one in five chance, and the action might get me closer to winning. Uh, okay, gonna do a move. If this is the main rift, I'm totally done. Okay, oh god. Okay, this is not much better. Um, so this is an enemy if I get detected, but the plus means that he's a harder enemy, so I'll actually have to fight a level three instead of a level two. So come on, if I ever, come on, if I ever need to hide, now's the time. Yes, good job, Warship. I don't know how you're so stealthy when you're all destroyed. So unfortunately, he's going to have to roll at the beginning of his turn again, so not great odds, but maybe he'll do it. But before we get to that, we have to roll for damage from the straining. One damage. Okay, so he is down to four life. Still alive. But he might not be for long because another avatar is coming out. Number one. All right, so number one comes into the closest corrupt system next to a player, which is clearly going to be our friend here. Number one is destruction with a corrupt arsenal. Whenever I roll a miss, I lose an additional damage. Lovely. And he immediately attacks the drone specialist. Only has three life left. But hey, he misses. Good job, Drone Specialist. Now the other Avatar is way back here, but he could catch up quickly. Oh no, only one. All right, now Avatars, when they move, will try to get somebody who's not already engaged. So he wants to get to me, not him. But he does take the shortest path, which will still have him teleport in here with the one move, which means that Yellow gets shot again. But again survives. Wow, nice job. And because another Avatar came out, we're shuffling in the level three enemies with our single remaining level two. And that means that if I do attack here, I'm gonna face a level four because uh, the plus raises it by one level. All right, this pacify token goes away. This one flips, this one flips. Oh, and sorry, you know what? I did play that wrong. I forgot avatars don't use movement to go into spaces already occupied. So he's actually here, one space closer to me. Which means I wouldn't have had to roll for yellow, but man, yellow's not doing too great, is he? All right, well, clearly we're going to do the warship's turn first. Man, if you can sneak by these deadly creatures, that'd be amazing. You have to roll for the attack. No, oh, they find him. So we're adding a level four to the deck. This is like a little mini avatar. Okay, Stalker, Disabling Beam. 21 life, four shields. When you roll at least one, you can't use any models during the next attack. 
I'm just uh, disengaging from you, buddy, so I don't care too much about your powers here. So I will disengage and get shot at. One damage, I can take that, so I have three life left. This is my first actual action. I'll uh, blind jump this way. Oh man, another enemy space, are you kidding me? All right, don't get killed. Ah, they find me again. But this time, hey, it's my friendly last level two. So I could actually defeat him, but uh, what's the point? I don't want to lose any more resources. All right, so let's disengage from him too. Oh gosh. Okay, that puts me at one life left and I get a damage card. Blown hyperspace drive. I can't use hyperspace rush, which is the multiple move thing, but I don't think I have time to do that anyway, so. Uh. All right, come on, I know you're in here. Uh, let's go this way. I've got two regular actions left. Okay, there it is. Now I'm gonna tell you right now, <laughs> My chances of winning are not good. Because when I put these things down to actually start the end game, all the avatars immediately move. Now this one won't move. He's engaged with my friend. But this guy will get to skip over that place. So he'll just come straight here. And if he reaches me, then I can't win until I kill him. Which is never going to happen. So basically, <laughs> my only chance is uh, if this guy rolls a no movement on his die and doesn't actually reach me through the rift. It's a one in six chance. I've only got one life. I mean, that's basically it. I'm not even gonna like pretend there's anything else going on. So I'm gonna take an action, put these down. My friend holds on to him, even though he never got a turn. This guy's coming. He's gonna skip over that space. He'll be right to me through the rift. I need that result. It is not likely this is a roguelike. You're supposed to lose. Ah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he comes in. Immediately attacks me. I'm not dead yet, but yeah, I'm not going to fight it out. There's no way I'm going to defeat a guy with rolling only one die. I can't even get through his shields. Uh, my friend is obviously going to die. There's no way we can fight him. So, almost made it. Really close to the end. Man, if the pirate ship had survived, I think maybe he could have held off one of these guys. Yeah, I don't know. I could have built the map better. But there you go. That was Exodus Rise of the Corruption. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you at the next stop.